Welcome everybody to Intuit Accountant's presentation of Create a Tax Advisory Workflow. We're going to spend the next hour talking about how to automate more of your compliance work so that you have capacity to deliver higher level advisory services. It's a pleasure to be your co-presenter. My name is Jim Buffington. I'm a CPA and I lead advisory services here at Intuit, which kind of means I learn a lot of best practices from leading firms and I share those out with our industry. My co-presenter today is a transformation specialist, Robbie Randall. Welcome, Robbie. Hey, everybody. Thank you, Jim. My name is Robbie Randall. I am a transformation specialist. What the heck does that mean nowadays? Well, we are trying to help firms like yours transform from that low perceived value compliance work to that promised land of higher value, higher revenue driving advisory services. I am a public speaker. I do own a small business. It is critical for me to help you help small businesses thrive. Please connect with me on social. I'd love to meet you out there in the Twitterverse and on LinkedIn. And one last thing, I think Jim would agree with us. If no one has told you lately, thank you. Thank you for everything that you have done this year. It has been insane out there. Uh, the th work you're doing with families, the work you're doing with small businesses, it, it's just unbelievable. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Jim, thanks for having me. You bet, you bet. Let's quickly cover what the learning objectives are for today. So at the end of this, you should be able to identify the benefits of an advisory workflow. Understand how the cloud technologies can automate so much of the work that you and your mm -hmm. business clients are doing today. And then finally, be able to communicate the benefits of real-time data and accurate books to your clients so that they value all of that great work that you do. So let's get started. Robbie, why don't you kick us off? Oh, this is so exciting. Let's dig into it. All right, let's automate and standardize that business tax workflow. I think there's a misconception out there when we talk about quick books, tax folks, you get a pass. No, that is not the case. It is for you too. So we're going to emphasize how to leverage QuickBooks and QuickBooks Online for your tax workflows. Moving right along, when we think about data collection and all of the things that we've had to do as an industry for the past, I don't know, ever, uh, you know, we used to run CDs around places. We used to run thumb drives around places. Uh, um, Online services like, uh, you know, um, when, when you host things on servers, all of that, all of that back and forth, when you use a legacy desktop product and you host it or you transfer files back and forth, when you ask your client to take an action, let's say you do some journal entries and they need to accept those journal entries, it's about a 50% attrition rate. And I know, I know you keep spreadsheets. I know you keep backups of backups of that data. So during tax time, you're able to go in and rekey all of that information that you have rekeyed before so that you can produce your tax return. Contrast that against the cloud. Contrast that against a single sign-on, one password, one login for QuickBooks Online. It's going to save you just a ton of time in that process alone. When we start to dig in and uncover more of how that works, you start to find that all of your client list is available in one screen versus hopping in and hopping out and hopping in and hopping out. Every time you're clicking in and out on a hosted server or transferring data, that is time and that is time you do not have in your business today. So think about all of your client list in one clean, easy view and because of that, we now have a new feature called Month End Review. We're going to dig into this a little bit more, a little bit deeper later. However, within a Month End Review, we would ask that you standardize it using these tools. And then you get a quick snapshot of what that looks like on your client list. You can't do that in a desktop world. So, you know, consider it's tax time or it's month end or quarter end. Where are they in that review process? How close are we to closing out those books? Now you get a quick snapshot and a quick checklist for you and your team. Your firm also has customized access to client data. 
What that means is you set up your staff, you set up your partners for access to specific clients. So if you have a partner group or people in the firm that need to see specific clients and don't need to see other specific clients, you could turn off that access very quickly. You'll notice on the top right, you do have that client list where you can easily just check and uncheck who sees what. Critically important. Now, if you're using QuickBooks Online Accountant, notice the accountant on the top left of the screen there. If you're using QuickBooks Online Accountant and you're sharing usernames and passwords, this is your free pass. Let's get together. Let's create a unique username and password for each one of your staff. Don't worry, admins. You can always turn your staff on and off if, as they come and go. But we want to make sure that no one is sharing usernames and passwords. There's more implications when that comes to ProAdvisor training. When you log into QuickBooks Online Accountant, again, see that accountant on the top left. Once you have your team set up, unique username, unique password, you can then track their training within the Pro Advisor module, which is fantastic. Now, just kind of lifting the nose of the plane a little bit, when we talk about cloud and why that's important, there are some very real benefits to your clients, to your staff, and also to your tax teams, some of which we've talked about already. We've already talked about the lack of need for installing, running updates, maintaining servers, you know, all of that stuff that builds overhead within your firm and cost, by the way. It's also building overhead and cost for your clients. We can eliminate all of that. There's additional benefits anywhere, anytime access, but I would take that further and say anywhere, anytime mobile access to data, which frankly, as a business owner, it's critical to compete in this day and age. It's not a need to have or a want to have, it's critical for business operations. Again, things you don't get in legacy desktop solutions. All right, um, Jim, this is a slide. This, there's a lot on this, but it does do a great job of highlighting the differences and contrasting the differences between desktop accounting and online accounting. Yeah, and it's so important that we as advisors to our clients, focus on the importance of real-time financials, real-time data for our clients who are, you know, struggling, they're running their business, sometimes they need to be making decisions with good information. And so having clean, up-to-date books, having real-time data is so important to running their business. And uh, it's, it's so possible today, as opposed to, you know, historically, where we have just recorded history and come in after the fact. So, um, so much opportunity for us to deliver more value as advisors with real-time financials. That's so true. And this is a, a great, great segue into things that are happening in the world. There are so many things happening nationally and globally that are outside the control of a business owner. The ability to collaborate internally as a firm and then point that collaboration externally with the client to help them pivot, to help them improve their cash position, to help them um, maybe go into a different market or, or do things differently uh, through other channels to help them capitalize on revenue opportunities. It, it's just so important these days, uh, maybe a little more than we've experienced in recent years. So very good point. We're going to hop into our first poll question. This is an excellent time to take our first break. What are some things you are considering eliminating or automating within your practice? Um, some of those things we would consider automating traditional time and billing. Desktop file exchange we talked about. It's laborious. It's not fun. It sucks. Bank downloads, write-up, uh, email, or data entry. Let us know what you think. Yeah, and uh, again, I think great illustration there earlier, Robbie, about how many steps it takes that are non-value when you're using that desktop file and you're exchanging that with your clients or even just running that for your own internal books versus that one login and eliminating all that maintenance of the program and those versions and the backups and access uh, so much simpler with a single dashboard to get to all of your clients. 
So great opportunity to automate and eliminate some of those steps. Love it. And I think we'll go ahead and close this down in five, four, three, two, one. All right. Here are the results today. Thank you so much for your time and attention to that first poll question. All right. Let's pivot to QuickBooks Online Certification Training. You may have noticed in the first couple of slides, there is a pro advisor section over to the left of QuickBooks Online Accountant. If you are a legacy desktop or enterprise user in the firm, pro advisor is still there. We just moved all of that training to the online module. So desktop, enterprise, online, payroll, payments, bookkeeping principles, all of that is available for you today in QuickBooks Online Accountant for free. There's over 200 hours of CPE sitting there right now for you. So if that's a need before we end this year, please ask us uh, how to get there. Let's email, let's correspond and get you in the right direction. All right, client overview. Jim, this is something new that we just rolled out this year. Client overview is a snapshot or a quick audit of the client's books. Please do not overlook this section. This is only in the accountant's edition. Again, you see the accountant on the top left. This will take eight hours of work. We've seen you, eight hours of work down to eight minutes. The reason is we provide hyperlinks. See where it says unaccepted transactions down there? Those are hyperlinks. Not only are we using artificial intelligence and machine learning to bubble up those critical things that you need to know, then they're just a click away to correct. So again, eight hours of work down to eight minutes. Another way that that'll help you is it'll help you bill for the future. Can't tell you how many times uh, when I speak with firms about their onboarding programs and one of the, the key issues that they have is how to bill appropriately. That snapshot will help you bill appropriately. It, it sets up and lets you know the work you have to do moving forward. So Excellent tool. Month end review we just shared uh, at QuickBooks Connect. We've been working on this for a little while, but again, an excellent tool to help you close out the month. What we've done is we've added three sections, transaction review, account reconciliation, and final review. Within each of those, there are, there are checklists, and we've given it our best shot. If you don't care for the checklist that we've provided, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can add your own checklist. Here it is. Feedback I've gotten is, look, I'm, I'm a 40-year veteran of this industry. I've got my workflows and processes built out easy peasy. Fantastic. What we'd like you to do is pour that into this program, build out the checklist, how you do it, and then share that across the organization. It's going to help you optimize the work that you do and build in that capacity that you need to pivot to advisory services. All right. There's also other things that help you speed right through that month end, quarter end or year end for our tax folks. If you go to the accountant's toolbox at the very top, you see right there in the middle, it says accountant tools. We have batch reclassifications. You can batch reclassify transactions battery cl classify locations, and also classes. Here's an example of what that class dropdown looks like for you and your team. If you've been pulling your hair out, wondering where batch reclassifications went to, many of the tools that you need are going to be found in that accountant's toolbox at the very top. Let's talk a little bit more about the accountant's toolbox. Here's a larger view of what's found inside you know, I hear a lot of times I'm working within reports, but every time I close one, it defaults to some weird date. I don't like it. Well, if you go to Accountant's Toolbox and click on Report Options, you can then set your defaults. I know you've been looking for that. So all of that is available for you. There's also different types of reports. If you're used to compilations, we have a tool called Management Reports where you can build out uh, compilation style reports for your clients, and yes, before you ask, of course you can add SARS-21 disclaimers. Of course you can add the disclaimers that you need to put them within and without peer review. So all of that is available for you within the accountant's tools. All right, your chart of accounts. Let me, just, oh, let me go ahead, on there, Robbie, that um, if you're still spending a lot of time sending reports, 
to clients, you might want to consider using that auto email certain reports to your clients. For instance, during the month, the accounts receivable manager may need to be aware of what's outstanding, maybe overdue invoices. So take advantage of the things that your business owner needs and send those on the right schedule. So that might be daily or weekly or semi-monthly, sending the right reports, and you can help create those, put them on autopilot, and they'll go on a regular basis, either PDF or Excel, to keep your business owner informed about the key performance indicators that you uh, you want to make them uh, focus on. So it might be overtime, uh, it might be inventory levels, might be making sure that the last 30 days of sales are at the level they need to for the month instead of waiting till the end of the month and realize they came up short. So you have a great opportunity to always be engaged with your client, with key performance indicators within those financials all through the month. And you can put that on autopilot. Absolutely. I, th- I think when we talk with firms and they're, you know, how do I build this capacity for advisory services? And I think they're, they want to, th- find that one thing that's going to give them hours in a day to pivot. But the reality is you're, you're dying by a death of a thousand cuts. It's all those little things throughout the day that take you away from automation, take you away from an optimized system, take you away from the conversations with your client. Jim just nailed it. Automate reporting, send those to your clients on a, on a cadence. If not your client, send them to the appropriate teams on the cadence, especially during tax season. Send them to your reviewer, whoever needs to see it. Uh, Within the accountant's toolbox, we also have other tools. See that little new window on the bottom left? Yes, you can open multiple reports at the same time. You absolutely can. Yes, you can have the bank feed open and reports open on your other screen. Of course you can. How do you get to that? Just open up the accountant's toolbox and click that little new window button. It's going to open a new tab for you and then just simply drag and drop that tab wherever you need it. If you want more information on that, go to the Google. Google QBO multiple windows and there's plenty of instructions out there, tutorials, YouTube videos on how to do that. All right. Preparing the client's books and closing the books. Closing the books is also found under the accountant's toolbox. You have two options here. Either you can allow your clients to make changes after you've closed the books, or you can add a password and not allow your clients to make changes after closing the books. There's tons of anecdotal stories about passwords. You know, if you make a password that says no, 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 And then your clients ask you for the password and you tell them and they're like, what's that about? And you're like, I'm just trying to warn you, please don't make changes to to after a closed period. It causes a lot of problems for all of us. So there's there's ways to anecdotally have fun with this. Um, But the point is, the features are there for you. Yeah. And that for you, tax advisors, that's a great way for you to stay current, doing your quarterly reviews of the financials and then close that period out so that there aren't any changes. When you get to the end of the year, you are gonna be ready for books to tax and preparing that tax return on your schedule instead of having to wait for the client to bring tons of information in. If you just bump in there periodically, meet with that client on like a quarterly basis at least, even if you're doing just taxes, you can move that close period forward so that you are ready on January 31st to close that out and do the tax return on your schedule. Love it. Y'all, it's no secret. Millennials make up the bulk of our workforce today. Within a year or two, it's going to be about 75% of our workforce. Traditional firms, I'm speaking to you right now. You know who you are. You're the ones that are working overtime and sleeping at the office during tax season. You are running young people out of our industry like never before. Yes, that's a challenging statement. Millennials do not want to work the way that we used to in the past. They don't want to spend the night at the office trying to work through your workload compression. What Jim's speaking to is marching back that closing period at minimum to a quarterly basis. So when January 1 hits, guess what? Close the last quarter and do the tax return on your schedule. Okay, that's a much different experience for your employees than than what we're used to with that compressed season. 
So at least consider it. Now, what happens if they make changes after the closing period? Of course, we've got reports that'll show that for you, exceptions to closing that is available under our reporting uh, section within QuickBooks Online Accountant. All right, prepping for taxes. This is one of my favorite parts. We have completely reimagined or revamped our prep for taxes section. To start with, we have implemented a document management system. You can create folders, you can create collect source documents all in one place on the client file for your clients and your staff. So if you're used to going in and out of different emails and, and document management systems and this and that, you can now centralize all of that information on the client file, which is wonderful. Review and adjust is a live working trial balance. What you'll notice over there on the left, those little gray check marks, click it and it turns into a green check mark. This is a checklist. As you work through those accounts, you can close them out by checking them off, letting everyone know those are done. You also have the ability to attach documents, add notes, do all the things that you're used to doing during tax time. There's also grouping and statements available for you. And then uh, lastly, we do tax mapping. So if you, we are gonna use artificial intelligence to map all of that data for you. However, you'll notice the little pencils over on the right. You do have the ability to go in and remap how you see fit. You can you change from cap to accrual. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, and again, that's going to map to whatever tax entity type you have, whether that's a Schedule C, it could yes. be an 1120S, 1120, uh, whatever your tax form is, you're going to choose that, and those tax lines will show up for the income statement and or the balance sheet to go for that um, tax entity, and then you're going to map those accounts. So once you've done it once, you know, the next year, it's basically you might have three new general ledger accounts that you have to map in, but it's almost completely ready to push one button and go to the tax return. Uh, the other thing I would uh, also maybe go back one slide there, Robbie, uh, that sure. green button at the top left, top right corner there, uh, you can download a copy of these work papers in Excel with all the tabs that you can just put right into your work papers. So oh, you've got all you. the tax line mappings, you've got your uh, balance sheet, your income statement, any adjustments that you had, all that is going to be exported to Excel for your work papers, and all of the financial statements will go to the tax program. Huge. Again, QuickBooks is also for tax. This is wonderful. I love these updates that we've made most recently. To Jim's point, it, this could easily be a 1065 return. You know, it could be an 1120S return. Uh, you do get the option of cash and accrual. It's just a button. You know, you choose which one you want to use. And then uh, to the point earlier, you can select the tax form uh, with a drop down. It's so easy to use. All right. Now, uh, we do want to bubble up uh, anything that we see that's out of the ordinary. So if we find unmapped accounts, you can assign those very quickly over on the right. You can download all of this data to a zip. You can carry forward all of that data from previous years. You also have the ability to export this data to an Excel file. Why is that important? If you're using a different tax software program that is outside of the Intuit family, you can export that data to Excel. And then I guarantee you they have ability to import that data. It's not as elegant, it's not as fast as our solution. However, it will save you some time and we wanna build that capacity so that you can focus on other things. Now for us, we would like to see that data exported to Tax Online and we do that within seconds. So again, 1120S, typically on a 1065 or 1120S, that's about a four hour exercise in data entry we can literally port that data over to the tax return within seconds. Of course, there's some review and you see some critical diagnostics that you need to work through. But again, we'd much have much, much more, we, we'd much rather have you invested into a 20 or 25 minute review 
then a, a 44 uh, hour data entry session on each of your returns. So it's incredible to think about how far technology has come. All right, let me pose that a different way that I'm thinking about it. And I just want to answer you, uh, ask you to consider this. And, and would you consider how competitive are you going to be in the future if your team is spending four to six hours on an 1120S or a 1065 return when your competitor across the street is able to do the same return in 20 or 25 minutes? This technology is available today. These are very real things that we're talking about today. Please start to explore what we're talking about on this session. We want to help you stay competitive. We want to help you automate as much as possible so you can get into the good stuff, uh, those deeper level conversations with the client. So glad to share that with you. Uh, Jim, any final thoughts before we hop into a polling question? Yeah, just you know, want to reinforce that again, for you to be a great tax preparer and a great tax planning advisor, when you automate a lot of these non-value steps and you have visibility to the financials throughout the year, you can do more tax planning proactively with your client, delivering higher value services and showing them the tax savings as a result of proactive tax planning instead of waiting at the end of the year for the client to bring things in and then you find out after the fact that there may have been some opportunities to do things differently. So yeah. being on that same platform, being engaged all year, you can simplify the, the tedious tasks and add tremendous more value and really highlight your knowledge and expertise as a tax strategist and show them uh, a lot more value there. Exactly right. There is nothing worse as a small business owner than to walk into your office in March and then hear about something I should have done last August. Ugh. Uh, if we could collaborate better in real time, that is a win-win. And I know what you're thinking already. I've heard it. How many times have you had that conversation with the client where you, you think and you say to the client, if you just would have called me, we could have worked this out. But... I want to challenge you on that. That's putting it on the client to know better. And the reality is you have the expertise. You know better. So let's get you on a cadence of being proactive in reaching out to the client and setting those dates and conversations, going deeper wherever you can, whenever you can, to flesh out that stuff ahead of time. So we, we both own part of that responsibility, and I'm glad we get to start to unpack that today on this call. So how well are you leveraging cloud automation today? Five is very well, all the way down to number one, not being well at all. Yeah, and for everybody, it is a journey. We, we understand. Uh, you have a lot of legacy clients who are uh, doing things the way they always have, and sometimes it's difficult to move them. What we often find is that it's easiest with clients who are new, that are walking in the door, and we recently did a survey with new startup businesses that are coming, uh, that are forming during this year, 2020, as well as planning to start up next year. And what we learned was 87% of businesses that are starting up now or planning to start up next year are planning to be primarily online. So this is, uh, this year has accelerated a trend by businesses to move online. So definitely everybody who's walking in the door, it's easy to start them on the right platform, on the right cloud uh, platform where you can collaborate with them. Uh, it doesn't mean that you've got to be comfortable. You have to know how to do that. We often recommend that you put your own books on uh, QuickBooks Online. It's free. You can learn how to use things there. When you put your own books in there, then you begin to really experience the power and uh, truly understand how many steps you can save, as well as a lot of the new reports that you can create to deliver new insights for your, your own firm as well as your clients. Uh, so we understand it's a journey. It's a, it's a, a process and, <clears throat> you know, you have a lot of clients. And so uh, it does take time to kind of move mm -hmm. those clients. It's the old adage, how do you eat an elephant, right? With a knife and fork or one bite at a time. 
And that, you're exactly right. Uh, gr- great, great point. But it all starts with a conversation, right? Uh, jump out there, try it, see how, find your favorite client and just, just pivot. See what we can do to be more proactive with them. Schedule meetings. If you're meeting with them annually, ask them if they'd be open to meeting quarterly and just talk. You know, there's, there's no harm done there. Uh, that is very, very good advice, Jim. Let's see these results very quickly. Thank you, everyone, for your participation in that poll question. How well are you leveraging cloud automation today? All right. Let's keep this thing moving. T- key tasks for year end. Here's a fantastic checklist for you to consider on the tax side of the house. Verify your balance sheet accounts. Make sure those things are reconciled. Review your P&L. Things, these are things you're doing already. Let's just go ahead and get those into a standardized format. Evaluate ARAP. Analyze your fixed assets and depreciation expenses. Run those taxable sales reports. And then, of course, review the year-end financial reports and then submit your W-2s and 1099s. This is an excellent way to standardize the work you're already doing. When we think about hiring new folks or or tightening up on our processes, this is a great way to do that. So let's dig a little deeper. Verifying balance sheet accounts are reconciled within QuickBooks Online Accountant. This is how you do that. This is how you check to make sure those things are reconciled. When Jim talked earlier about automating reports, there, we also have the ability to create bundles of reports. So you could create a report bundle called uh, balance sheet account reconciliation. And within that, you can have your balance sheet, your reconciliation summary, your reconciliation history, your de- discrepancy report, and your payroll liability report. That way, when you go to the customized report section of QuickBooks Online Accountant, You just unclick that bundle and run it. You've got all your key reports right there ready for you. Same thing with review your profit and loss activities. Same idea. Create a bundle of reports. If you're not sure how to do that, we can send you information on how to do that. In this report bundle, you're going to have your balance sheet, your payroll summary by employee, your P&L, and also your 1099 contractor balance detail report. So again, using that checklist, You can create bundles of reports to help you work through this data in a way that's efficient and effective. AP and AR, same scenario, accounts payable, including AP aging, accounts receivable, including AR aging, open invoice reports, and unpaid bills reports. All of that's available in the accountant's edition. Now, you may find that if you have essentials or a lower edition, lesser edition of QuickBooks Online for your client, you may find that some of these reports aren't available. Uh, That's when you would want to consider a tier like QuickBooks Online Plus. By the way, Plus also has budgets, budgets versus actual. Uh, I've learned this from Jim. If you're going to start out in advisory, there is no better way than getting each of your business clients on a budget. And then simply talking about the budget versus actual. Welcome to advisory. You're doing it. Uh, Jim, what do you think about that? Oh, love that. <clears throat> and again, our our business owners are so focused on what they love and what they do well. They're, they're not numbers people. They don't want to do that. But they appreciate the fact that you can help them stay on track, that you can help them monitor the right expenses, create the right sales numbers that they need to hit every month. And there's a beautiful widget in QBO. Um, I love this one the most. And it's the last 30 day sales because mm. you can tell them, hey, we got to hit one hundred and eighty thousand dollars every month. So I want you to look at this widget every day and make sure that the last 30 days we're tracking at one hundred and eighty or above. So when you start to be the advisor to help them reach their goals, to help them grow their business, be profitable, um, you become way more than just the tax prepare or the bookkeeper. Um, So love that. Budgeting is a great place to start, budget versus actual. Uh, Me too. Uh, You know, to to think about a business that doesn't have a budget is a, it's heartbreaking. And, and, you know, gosh, if if that's the one thing we can do this year and just make it a goal for the teams, look, all of our business clients, let's help them get a budget. What a difference that would make 
for, for many of those clients. So awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is management reports. I teased this up just a little bit earlier. This is your compilation. This is a very colorful example of how it could look with a client's logo, some color added. You see for management use only at the bottom. You know, frankly, I've seen these as aseptic and as colorless as you want to make it. Uh, and you do have the ability to add footers, custom footers. So if you want to put in your SARS-21 or other uh, compliance notices within there, you could certainly do that. The cool thing about management reports, aside from the fact that you've got, you know, cover letters, ending pages, all of that beautiful stuff, is that if you customize a report inside of the management report, it is always available. So when you go to run that management report for your client, all you need to do is update the dates, maybe revise your cover letter to make it relevant and up to date, and then send that thing off. So I've heard CPAs tell me that it saved them about an hour's worth of work. So if you're not used to or haven't heard of our management reports before, please, I, I implore you to investigate those. Let's have a dialogue about it and start to unpack that feature for you. Of course, you can file W-2s and 1099s through Intuit. That's under the payroll section to get that stuff started for your client. And then for the taxes, that is under the tax tab over on the left. Under tax, you'll find sales tax. We have automated sales tax for your clients. And then we have payroll taxes on the right uh, that's available as well. And then we've highlighted where to find those specific forms for you for W-2s uh, down there. And let me just also pile on there, Robbie, while you're mm -hmm. on payroll, QuickBooks Online Payroll has added so many features that help you as a tax advisor do more for your clients. It's easy to set up 401k plans, retirement plans, add health insurance for these uh, businesses. So you can help manage a lot of these tax strategies by making deductions directly from payroll. You can help them start building savings for retirement through those 401k and retirement plans uh, much easier than it used to be um, in the old days. So uh, there's many more new features within QuickBooks uh, online payroll, but I just wanted to highlight those that help you as a tax strategist uh, be more engaged with your clients. I absolutely love it. The fact that we have employee benefit HR support for small businesses, 401k plans, and small business insurance, all available within QuickBooks Online now, is exciting. As a small business owner, this stuff is cool. I've had to go to a hundred different resources to try to figure out a hundred different things. Now it's all available in one place. Not only that, I can engage your firm to help me understand it and also to activate it and employ it for all of my team. So that that is super exciting nowadays. Um, COVID-19 resources, we have put all of those resources into one uh, space for you. We know this year has been hectic. Uh, we just wanna make you aware of the fact that there is a hub of information waiting for you within QuickBooks Online Accountant. Uh, it's called the COVID-19 resource page. That is found within the payroll section of QuickBooks Online. Yeah, we completely automated the employee retention credit through payroll. We automated the COVID sick leave credits through payroll, and we gave you tools to help with the PPP loans. So um, a lot of good stuff in there. Absolutely. And we're just about wrapping up my time with you today. <laughs> um, there are additional year-end activities that you get into. We had talked about how to get that information over to ProConnect Tax Online. There's just some other ways to think about what you need to do for those year-end activities. We would ask that you standardize those practices as well. And you're going to hear standardization and optimization a lot because we have found nationally working with your peers that the ones that standardize their processes the firms that have optimized how they use this technology, those are the folks that are winning hand over fist. And we want to share those best, best practices with you as often as we possibly can. So this is a great start heading down that path. Now with anything, we've got to communicate right. changes to clients. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to Jim. And if you'll take us through uh, some of that communication, that'd be great. 
Hey, Riley, thank you so much for sharing some of the great features within QuickBooks Online, which is really a platform to help experts advise their clients, not just accounting, not just doing bookkeeping, but really an advisory platform where you can collaborate, engage, and be proactive with your clients. So a lot of great features in there that you shared there, Robbie. Thank you. Pleasure. This is just a small illustration of the exponential value of moving your workflow to the cloud and automating more of those transactional steps that Robbie covered. Your small business clients spend an average of 21 hours a week on back office accounting work that doesn't add value. And when you help move them to the cloud, you have the opportunity to give them as much as 40 hours a month back that they can then invest in their business, doing what they love. So it makes your business clients more efficient, but it also makes your firm more efficient. We find that on average, pros who move to the cloud are able to serve twice and take full advantage of the QBO automation. They're able to serve twice as many clients per employee within the firm. So great opportunity for you to grow your business and help your clients to grow their business. One of the challenges that we often hear from advisors is that you don't know how to migrate legacy clients to a new platform. The truth is your clients already trust you and they're waiting for your expert advice. Pros tell us that when you make a recommendation and you present the benefits, your clients overwhelmingly say, okay, sure, if you say so, and they're ready to take your recommendation. Many pros move clients in waves or in groups. So again, we started earlier um, with new clients coming in the door. Those are the ones that are already ready to jump on the cloud. They want the easiest, most automated process available. Uh, but then start with your own books. Make sure that you and your team are confident using QuickBooks Online. And then moving your internal write-up clients. So you're doing a lot of work that requires you to collect a lot of information, uh, do a lot of data entry, move those to the cloud. Start to get the efficiencies there. Um, and then you can tackle other groups. So maybe those clients that are more out in the field and ready to um, take advantage of some of the reporting or some of those field uh, mobile opportunities. Um, but a lot of it begins with communicating and it starts good communication starts with why you are making the change and in this case uh, and we got this from a, a pro uh, we're adding tax planning proactive tax planning to every engagement to save clients money over the long term and pretty much every client is interested in saving more on taxes so it's a great way to start that conversation with your clients Next, share what it means for them. What's in it for them? We're moving our services to a cloud platform where we can easily engage and collaborate with you. They love that because you know what they hate? They hate getting nagged. They hate getting nagged from you for information that they don't see the benefit of. True. And you can share some other benefits there. Um, one benefit is that more users are more confident managing their finances. Um, and then finally, Reinforce your purpose, serving your clients. Your goal is to minimize tax liability and help them reach their goals. Uh, this communication is actually in a PDF that introduces bundled services in your handout. So if you want to uh, download that and consider using that, that might be helpful to communicate to your clients about your strategy to move to a cloud platform where you can serve them better. Let's talk about your clients. This latest generation of clients are not only digital natives, they are the most entrepreneurial generation. They are creating new businesses at a higher rate than every other prior generation, including the boomers. And eight out of 10 of these new businesses choose cloud applications to run their operations, including choosing QuickBooks Online instead of QuickBooks Desktop. It's important for you to be able to explain the benefits to your clients if you're going to ask them to move their process from desktop to cloud or to 
you know, move it from manual maybe to cloud, which is more automated. Even more important than creating that collaboration platform for planning advisory services, leading firms recognize how the cloud powers prosperity for their clients. It is not about bookkeeping. It's not about compilations. It's not about compliance. Those are byproducts of good advisory services. And leading firms are interested in powering prosperity for their business clients who are moving very fast. What clients love most about the cloud is mobile access to real-time data. It is a must to be competitive in this fast-moving world. 67% of businesses say they would not even survive without mobile access to their data. Second is automation. Clients love automation. I mentioned the 21 hours a week they spend paying bills and doing back office work. The cloud cuts that time in half. Next, they care about growth. And 96%, 96% of business owners agree that QBO helps them grow their business from being able to invoice and create proposals in the field to responding to new leads from wherever they are. It gives them a competitive advantage. It shortens their sales cycles by as much as 14%. That helps them grow. They also care about real-time insights that you provide that help them make better business decisions. Again, the cloud gives you the opportunity to be proactive and help scale insights to your staff and to all of your clients. And then finally, the number one worry of every small business owner is cash flow. 67% of them regularly lose sleep over cash flow, and 32% of your clients cannot pay their bills or make payroll this month. Cash flow is a big deal. The cloud helps improve cash flow and helps you engage to consult with them to improve cash flow. This is the magic of the cloud that the desktop will never deliver. And these are the reasons that eight out of 10 new businesses choose the cloud and QuickBooks Online to run their businesses. Next, I wanna share with you, uh, so I was talking about the value to small businesses of the cloud. Mobile is also incredibly important to them. They want to be able to access their data, their reports, their customers, uh, their orders, from their mobile device, from their phone, from their tablet, uh, wherever they are. And so the easiest way for advisors to engage clients and show them the benefits is to show them what they can do on their own mobile device. And I'm gonna ask my friend Woody to walk you through a quick demonstration of what the QuickBooks Online mobile app can do for your clients today. So Woody, this video it focuses video on focuses an overview on, of the mobile app that you can download onto your phone. So next time you're in the apps on your iPhone or Droid or whatever, just go ahead and you know download QuickBooks. You know we have a self-employed one, but I'm going to be in the QBO one. The QuickBooks one is for QBO, not desktop, but for QuickBooks Online. So you just click on QuickBooks, and it'll open up, and here is your dashboard. Right, it gives you a profit and loss, kind of a chart and graph, and then I can view the specific, you know chart itself, or I can click view report, and it gives me my P&L. So it's P&L and a balance sheet. If you go back home, I can click review transactions, and this would be banking. So I see that I have 47 new transactions. I can click over here, and I can just swipe to the right, and this just accepts it into the register, if you will, right, as you're going through. You can even look at the recognized ones and click accept all at the bottom if I wanted to. I can't do a reconcile from here, but that gives me, you know, the option. And then I can sort by date amount, A to Z, money in, money out, or even select multiple. Now, when you click add, I can actually add a bank to my QBO file from the phone app as well. Now, you'll see invoices that are open and paid. I'll see some account balances. This is all still on the home page on the dashboard. We'll get to the plus sign in a second. When I click on activity to the right of dashboard, these would be my recent transactions, right? I just added an expense today at 116, right? Because those came in in the feed, right? Those two, you know, both at 116. Then I did some work on a demo earlier today. So that's left over from there. So it's like your last bunch of transactions, if you will. And I even have an attachment here with a note. We'll, we'll talk about notes in a bit too. 
some cool stuff you can do with a phone app for QBO or, or on the tablet. Now, if you need full functionality, like I won't be able to do a reconcile, you know, I can't get to the manage user windows, not a whole lot of count and settings. So there are, there's going to be some feature sets that are not accessible when I'm using the mobile app for QBO. But I could always log in natively to qbo.intuit.com, you know, on a browser on the phone, but it's not really optimized for it. So I still like this app, particularly when you're out and going along. Go back to the dashboard. I am going to click the plus sign. And here are the available transactions that can be entered using the mobile app. I have a sales receipt, expense, bank deposit, estimate, invoice, and payment. I'm also going to click the three lines, hamburger icon, if you will, in the upper left next to home. It tells me to file them in, notes and attachments. So obviously there's a feed there. And an atta- these are all the attachments that I have. Notes, attachments, here's my products and services list. And yes, I can add an item if I want, or a product or a service. And you can do a search just by clicking search. So on all of these lists, like products and services, customers, they have a little search field, right? And it's helpful to drill in on a customer and see their address. You can do that all from here as well. Vendors as well. And then banking, of course, is bank feeds. You have your chart of accounts. And then we have the transactions. And then down below, there's two reports, and then you have some settings, but that's not the accountant settings. Speaking of attachments, creating transactions you know, from the mobile app when you're out, I'm going to go ahead and click the plus sign next to expense. And I could have done that from the dashboard plus sign, and this is what it looks like. Take a photo. And here I can go ahead and take a picture of a receipt. So you take the pic. There's my receipt. Click use this photo. And then you can fill it out exactly what it was. So it was 2356. And it was other because it was like a debit card. Company checking, who did I pay? See, this is where you can either scroll through or just do a search for a particular vendor. There you go. McDonald's. Don't judge. Good stuff. Value meal, right? Sometimes it'll come over with a, an account already taken care of, local meals. But look, I can assign a location or a class, or I can do some job costing to pass this expense through. Add a split. Put a reference number or a memo at the bottom. So I'm creating the transaction. In the QBO file, it will actually match to the bank feed two days later, right, with the receipt attached. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save. Another thing to point out, too, let's do an estimate. Let's say you're out at your customer. You can create a new estimate. But you can also take a signature. So once I create the estimate, there's this Get Signature down here. And that's on the estimate and the invoice. So then that person can sign it, you know. That's pretty sweet. I can't really do that inside, and I can choose who accepted by and, or convert it invoice or whatever. So now I have the saving signature. I always thought that was kind of nifty. You know, and of course, you can convert it to an invoice from here. You can also add documents. I could go add an attachment or notes, if I will, the edit icon. And then you have the, again, the little three dots, you know, the ellipsis on the upper right of transactions. It'll give you some other options, like the more button when you're on a transaction in the browser of QBO, pretty similar. So I can convert to an invoice or here are the other options, preview email, you know, export, copy, delete. The signature capture is on the estimate and the invoice, not the sales receipt, because the sales receipt's like paid, right? So why would you do a, a signature? But I just wanted to make sure. Track the activity. Go back into the left-hand panel. So again, bank deposits. Those are the supported transactions. Couple reports. You don't have much for settings. Payroll will open up into an online payroll. And then notes and attachments. I can see, I can write notes, and I can also attach things right into QuickBooks Online. Quick note. We'll see where this shows up in QBO. Assigned to a particular, all right, so it's a note on a particular customer. Right, that's where it's going to show up. Save that. And you can add new customers and vendors as well from either customer or vendor page. Just click plus, fill out the appropriate information. We'll go back home. So that is the current functionality on the mobile app for QBO. Have a great day. Thanks, Woody. Good job demonstrating the power of the mobile app. And we're at that point for final CPE polling question. So what are the benefits of the cloud business clients? Hopefully you've been paying attention and uh, some of those resonate with you. Please do respond to that question for CPE purposes. And again, we'll send you a CPE certificate later if you been in for the entire 15 minutes and uh, polling questions. And uh, so we've covered a lot of material 
Bobby and I today, and it may mm-hmm. feel like drinking from the fire hose about QuickBooks Online. Our goal is not to be a sales commercial for QuickBooks Online. Our purpose is to show you the opportunity as the tax advisor, how you can become proactive, how you can become much more collaborative with your client and make your practice much more efficient. Take out those workload spikes from tax season and replace it with more valued quarterly meetings with business clients and adding tax strategies into that conversation. So when you get to tax prep time, it is basically proactive return on your schedule and crank it out. And it goes a whole lot easier. Um, and there's no surprise you can engage all the way along. So kind of from that reactive client focus uh, to helping you be more proactive uh, the more tax strategies during the year and then uh, really simplify and make tax season a better experience for the whole team. I'm going to count this one down. Three, two, one. Thank you. And there are the results. Great. Looks like most people were paying attention. Thank you. That always makes Robbie and I feel better. I <laughs> love it. And, let me just share with you here. We've got some links here. I have some videos. Uh, the QBO mobile app that Woody just demonstrated. <clears throat> Actually look at that yourself or share that with your clients. Uh, it's a good tool to share and uh, generate some benefits for them. Uh, just copy those to your browser. It may not work in your PDF if you just click on it, uh, but just copy that link to your browser. Also, QuickBooks Online features that don't exist in desktop, that's a good one. That last one down there, Browser Best Practices, will show you how to open multiple windows in QuickBooks Online, as well as some other really good tips using QuickBooks Online in a browser. So there's some good resources there. Also want to highlight that if you want more training, go to our ProConnect uh, Training Center, where we have tons of great training to help you get ready for this tax season. And uh, also... We've got community resources available, and you can click there. And uh, a couple other resource links with some things there, and I think we are just about wow. there. Uh, we did that. We did that. We answer your question during the hour. If we didn't get to it, we apologize. Um, but we have been frantically answering as many questions as we can during this session. So, Robbie, thank you for presenting a lot of great information to help them become proactive advisors and collaborate better with their clients. This is such a pleasure, y'all. Small Biz Pro on LinkedIn. If you have questions or something is nagging you, do what your peers have done and reach out to me after today's session. Let's have a conversation. It's worth it. Uh, Jim, thank you so much for allowing me to partner with you on this journey. Awesome. Thank you. And thank you all for being here today. And thank you so much for powering prosperity for your clients. Thank you for watching Tax Pro Talk, brought to you by Intuit Pro Connect for tax and accounting professionals.